What do you think is the next big step the league should take? I think weekly 2Ks. Me personally, I'm very torn on the city based. So maybe remove city based to bring in uh, bigger orgs. That's a question mark for me though. Obviously more events and stuff now with the subsidy and with teams having a little bit more money because they don't have to pay the upfront 25 mil or whatever, or they're getting refunded. Weekly 2K with four uh, open teams. So we actually have a regular bracket. I think I think the honestly Hitch's tweet about the promotion relegation was not bad. I, I actually like that idea too. Third party tournament organizers, yeah. What's promo relegation? Promotion relegation is like you're in a league with let's say let's say we have a 16 team league, right? Or 12 team league. Let's let's go 16 team league, right? You have 16 teams. Bottom four. So like let's uh, there's a cutoff. So top 12 and bottom four. Bottom four get relegated. And the top four from an, like an amateur league, am league, get promoted to the main league. So like it, there's a constant cycle of you have to perform the best or you're going to get dropped down to the amateur league and the new four guys are going to get promoted to the, the main league for you. So there's always a constant, you know, threat of your spot being taken by another team. So it, it, brings an incentive to teams to actually try and and invest in their team and invest in resources and just be a better team so they don't have that opportunity to get relegated and instead they maintain their spot in the main league and they get better viewership they get better fans all that stuff some people like city base some people don't i'm very torn on it because i do think there are benefits of it but I think it's so hard for newer orgs to come in to like CDL now and want to actually split off their org into a different brand like that. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It's a very big barrier entry for uh, bigger orgs that would be enticing to have as part of the league. The league will still be top heavy. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends on the resources and investment that teams are willing to make. So like if you get let's say let's say C9 joins the the league, I mean let's say they just want to have a winning roster. So now you have you know five, I mean or technically five different teams, or maybe they want to try and buy out people from one of the top four teams to make their own roster. Now you have another fifth one. You know it it all depends on how much these orgs are willing to invest and buy in to their team to have a good team. What about a salary cap? The thing with a salary cap right now is you cannot have a salary cap without union, without a player's union. Why? Because think about it this way, a salary cap restricts the amount a team could possibly pay an entire team. But what does that technically do? It actually restricts the amount of money that one player could technically make. And because you're restricting the amount of money that one player can technically make, you're, you're restricting salaries, that's illegal. You can't do that. So if there was a player's union to bargain, then that would be a way for a salary cap to actually be implemented because, you know, they could collectively bargain and say to each other, you know, okay, we're going to have a salary cap here, but here's what you can have players. That this is a benefit to you guys. And, and you, you bargain certain things and eventually come to some type of agreement. But be high, by having a salary cap, you're restricting the maximum amount that a player could technically make. Like so let, let's say, let's say the the salary cap just, I mean, let's say the salary cap was just one million dollars, and let's say Seth was still in the league. You're telling me that they that Optic couldn't pay him one point one million dollars if he actually earned that much for the, the the team. Yeah, that's restricting the amount that he could technically make. You know. So they would, they would have to be a player's union to be, uh, what's it called? To actually combat that. What if players want to stick together, then they decide to take a pay cut? Yeah, they could. But again, if they decide to take a pay cut, that's, you know, that's, that's something the players have to be willing to do.
you know, you saw it with the LAT team, but you know, it's not always going to be a case where like players want to take pay cuts. That's the, you see the same thing in regular sports. Would I include prize money? No, this is just uh, just regular salary. Salary caps would include prize monies. Would be sick if there was a draft, make these teams more even. The thing with the draft is how would that work? So it would just be like just amateurs coming out of the system and you just go like one to 12 draft of who who finished last. Again, without a players union, I'm, I wonder how that is in terms of like freedom for players. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause they are technically restricted to playing for the team that drafted them and not, they don't have that free agency that they technically have nowadays. So I, there would have to be some sort of rights for them because otherwise it would just be like, you know, they just get drafted and have to play for that team, but there's no benefits coming to them with some sort of player union, you know? I think the, I think the whole players union kind of fucks up a lot of these things that you might want to implement it in the league. Now uh, take the 48 leaders, 48 players in the league as the draft eligible, eligible dual lottery for the draft order. Why would teams want to give up their, why would the top four teams want to give up their rosters? That makes absolutely no sense. You know, I mean, sure. It'd be fun for like viewership and uh, people to see like teams like that. But why would, why would the top four teams making their investments that they are? Why would they agree to that? Honestly, if there was any time to do that type of thing, it would have been once the CDL started. Because everyone was free agents. If they wanted to do a draft type thing, that's when they would have done it. But again, the whole point of a draft is there, there's no, there's no uh, free agency for the players. The players get completely fucked in that situation because they could get more money from a team that they that wanted them if they if they could but now they're just okay you're drafted you have to play for this team where's where's the fairness for the players in that situation you know what i mean the whole point of the 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 free agency of when the cdl started was like okay you can get a bag from whatever team is willing to give you that bag you know if if let's say minnesota wanted to give everyone like $700,000 a year you know they could do that and if you wanted that 700k you could go play for minnesota and if you thought you were you like you wanted that that paycheck you know you could do that now it's your you're drafted to minnesota you don't technically have to get paid seven hundred thousand dollars they can pay you the league mini, minimum if they wanted to that's the whole point uh, dude the, the, a draft fucks over the players so incredibly hard set contracts to one to two years for each player I mean, you could do that, but again, it's still they're they're locked into that team for two years. If they don't have a, a rep, some type of representation with a union, like, do you realize how much that fucks over the player? Like, obviously, in the CWL days, they could just go to whatever team they wanted, who was ever going to pay them that much, and they signed the contract. You're telling me you go into the CDL and now you're forced to play for a team? A draft would be fun. Oh, for sure. For off-season tournaments and things that like don't matter. Yeah, for sure. That'd be fun. But that, uh, but like, again, for the actual CDL, the actual professional league, that, it makes no sense to me. Why aren't contracts public like pro sports? The same thing, guys. We keep going to it. Players union. There's no players union. No, the, the contracts aren't going to be public. I mean, technically everyone could just make it public, but they're not going to. A lot of these things stem from keeping players' interests in hand. Hard to say, but personally, where do you see the league going from here slash changing, if you can speak about it? I just think, honestly, I think it's it's a huge W for the league. Like, it's a huge W for the teams. More investment should be made into the league with the subsidizing of events, because now teams can easily, like, more easily host events, and they don't have to upfront that $25 million anymore. So they technically have more money to be willing to invest in some way for the league. Hopefully, obviously, obviously they could just put that in their pocket, but hopefully they actually use it for good for the league in some ways. I didn't think there's other things that they could do as a league though. Like we were talking about it before, but like weekly 2Ks to, to bring interest, doing other things to just help out in general. 
I talked about city based. I, I'm very torn on it. I think it's good for local activation, but I don't think it's good in order to bring in newer orgs like if C9 or Navi, Fnatic, all those teams wanted to kind of join in. Is that tournaments like 2K? Yeah, 2K. 2Ks were online tournaments that were like every week. Even if they were just fucking, even if they were single limb, bro, something, something in the middle of the, the week that would actually be real reps. Because right now, all we have is we have scrims, and then we have league matches at the end of the week. Jesus, I'm butchering this. But there needs to be um, more than more real reps other than just league matches. Guys, we play seven matches over the course of a month. Think about it that way. Seven real matches, actual reps in an entire month until we get to a LAN. With one weekly 2K, you can legit have that many matches in one week. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's a double limb bracket, you could technically have seven matches if you win the tournament or something like that. Like, and those are seven real reps going hard. Scrims are obviously like everyone's practicing, whatever, they might not be going as hard. You're, you're, you're not playing a best of five like that. <coughs> Excuse me. I think, I mean, I think real reps, even though they're online are, would be so important, uh, for the growth of the league for, because think about it this way. It would just be like every Wednesday, Wednesday night is, is the 2k everyone's streaming all the pro player. I mean, I don't know if the pro players would stream it now that I think about it, but it could be streamed. If they wanted to, they ha they could have the pro players stream it or force the pro players to stream it, uh, but not have to have comms or something. I'm trying to think of ways that you can have real reps that aren't just league matches because we have one or two a, a week, if anything.